As the planes crashed into the World Trade Center and the Pentagon on 9-11, most local people were frozen in horror watching the shocking tragedy unfold. But others, well, they were trying to find out why it was happening and how to put an end to it. Those men and women were huddled in a command center at Tyndall Air Force Base looking for their command, looking to their commander, General Larry Arnold. On the morning of 9-11, the men and women of the 1st Air Force's North American Air Defense Command were in day four of a training exercise. Yeah, we were right in the middle of a, um, a NORAD exercise. Uh, it involved Canada, the United States, uh, Lower 48, and Alaska as well. That's when General Larry Arnold received a message about a possible hijacked airliner. He ordered the launch of several jets from the Northeast Air Defense Sector in Rome, New York. And as it just turns out, the moment they got airborne was when the first airplane, I believe it was American 11, uh, crashed into the North Tower at the World Trade Center. At the time, General Arnold could not confirm this was a terrorist attack. In fact, I didn't know it was an airliner. I thought maybe a light airplane had crashed in there. It was hard to tell the perspective at that particular time. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't until the second airplane hit and then we suddenly know, hey, this is not a coincidence. That set off a chain of events that saw the first Air Force rushing to get jets into the air to intercept potential threats over Washington, D.C. and scrambling to identify other possible hijackings. We already launched airplanes out of Otis. The next closest airplanes that we had were at Langley Air Force Base uh, in Virginia. General Arnold launched those jets. Those airplanes headed out over the Atlantic. They had to talk to the Navy who controlled the airspace out there then got handed over to the Northeast Air Defense Sector. But by then they are 75 to 100 miles out over the ocean, had to turn around and come back to DC. That's when the next plane, American Airlines Flight 77, crashed into the Pentagon. It, it cost us some time. Could we have stopped them? I don't think so. By now, General Arnold's team was tracking no less than 22 airliners that were, in his words, acting strangely or being hijacked. They turned their attention to a blip on the radar screen heading south towards Washington, D.C. It was United Flight 93. We said, okay, when it gets to be 100 miles, we will push out and intercept that airplane. Uh, Shanksville, Pennsylvania is 105 miles from uh, Reagan Airport which was the center of our, our attention. As it turned out, the United Flight 93 passengers overpowered the hijackers and the plane crashed near Shanksville. A lot has been made out of the handful of people who have the authority to order the downing of an airliner. General Arnold was one of those people, and he was preparing to use that authority if necessary. We're going to intercept this airplane if he comes within 100 miles. We're going to try to divert him using standard signals that pilots give to airliners. Uh, if he doesn't, if they don't respond, we'll fire warning shots. If we don't have anything from the president, by then we'll order that airplane to be shot down to save lives on the ground. Communications suffered during the chaos that took place that morning. Vice President Dick Cheney was in the basement of the White House with Secret Service and ordered the District of Columbia National Guard to scramble their F-16s. Little did he know, we already had airplanes overhead DC, F-16s out of Langley were over DC. We were not in contact with the Secret Service. And President Bush was on Air Force One, leaving Sarasota for what turned out to be Louisiana. It's unclear if General Arnold ever had permission to shoot down Flight 93. I think the 911 Commission believes that we've got that authority by the last time, that uh, just before United 93 went down. But I really don't recall whether we had it or not. But that was our intent. Under emergency authority, we decided that's what we had to do. And he's glad he did not have to make that call. Glad we didn't have to do that, by the way. It, it, would have, uh, it, it would have been something that I would not care to have lived with, nor the pilots that would have carried that out. And I believe they would. The Air Force was tracking one more airliner, a U.S. air flight leaving Spain and headed to the United States. By this time, President Bush was on board Air Force One, talking to Secretary of Defense Donald Rumsfeld over a secure communications line. General Arnold was listening in. Uh, so, Mr. President, we have confirmation that that last airplane is down. And he said, I'm coming back to Washington. I'm going to Washington. 
that mark the end of what is the single most deadly attack on America. General Arnold went on to say the U.S. was not prepared for this type of a terrorist scenario, airliners with passengers on board. We talked about lessons learned, what's changed since 9-11, and how he'll spend this 20th anniversary. You can see a longer version of this story in our entire interview on MyPanhandle.com.